Why do you love metal? It's a question that metalheads get asked all the time, a question that has as many answers as there are metalheads. You can love Black Sabbath, Lamb of God, and The Sugar, but the specific reasons you love each band may intersect very little, if at all. The purpose of this show is to dig into the question, to explore and celebrate the vast stylistic variety within the metal genre. So, why do you love metal? Let's find out on Five Songs. And here we are, uh, another episode of Five Songs. Unfortunately, uh, the guest I had uh, planned for today, through unforeseen circumstances, couldn't make it. So what we're going to do is uh, go through some past episodes and cobble together... uh, we're going to put together a few songs that uh, from bands that I had, well, songs that I had never heard of that made a very strong impression on me. And we're, uh, you know, we're going back to uh, to such guests as uh, Chuck Marshall, Daryl Mitchell, Davey Downs, Brian Paxton, and Fred Hagen. Uh, and we're going to uh, just kind of revisit uh, the segments of those episodes for, uh, for some songs that really stood out for me. So uh, why don't you check out this sort of best of segment, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Take it easy. All right, uh, next song on the list, The Absence. Yeah. This one is called... The Murder. The Murder. Yeah. Oh, I like so, it already. Yeah, so the... I don't the, think I've heard the... I, I, I'm not familiar with The Absence, so... So those... Uh, so I can't remember exactly how I stumbled upon that band, but um, they, again, have that... Um, it's kind of melodic death metal. Um, they're from Florida. They um, just pack a, a ton of, like, energy and really great songwriting um and the singer i I mean i just love his voice he i mean he's just screaming like a motherfucker plus the um the guitar players you know they have twin guitar players really beautiful like exotic lead playing but um overall just everything the drums are fantastic um the whole song construction is is powerful they started off um it's got this intro with uh i think it's a banjo um but you you don't really notice it it's it's kind of like uh, tucked in there you think it's like an acoustic guitar but I think it's a banjo anyway I saw those guys at um, I've been a fan of theirs since their first album came out but this is um, Riders of the Plague and um, so that's what this album is on I met those guys at uh, the Token they were at there two years ago um, there was only it was like a Wednesday night maybe 20 people there oh, uh, I got to hang out with them a little bit and meet and talk to them Jeremy Kling is the drummer super cool guy he plays in uh Oh gosh, I'm gonna butcher it. It's uh, Necromancing the Stone and uh, Worm Womb Bath. He's, him and uh, Taylor, uh, the guitar player, are gonna be playing with Womb Bath at uh, Maryland Death Fest. But anyway, those guys are awesome, and this song is awesome. Great. All right, this is the absence with the murder.
Absence, the murder. That was a wild song. It's yeah, so good. It is. I mean, uh, it's got, it's, it was had like nine, 19 solos in it. And they were all awesome. <laughs> it does. I mean, the, the guitar players in there are, are I mean, like I said, the, that whole band, super talented. Plus, you know, again, songwriting, you know, really great, structured, epic song, just heavy as fuck and you're just like yeah, the whole time oh yeah jeez <laughs> i got I, i'm gonna have to definitely look into those guys because they were yeah that was that was a wild ride i love it man <laughs> <laughs> i'm getting blown up by text messages here because i'm a this is a very professional operation <laughs> <laughs> fallujah the void alone now fallujah is a more of a death metal band is it yeah um i think they market themselves as um um, not spacey uh, death metal, but uh, ambient death metal, whatever you want to call them. Um, I think they approach it a little differently. You know, you have the typical growly vocals, um, but on this track and lots of other tracks, they had a guest. Uh, they have this guest singer, um, this Tori uh, Letzler, uh, who does these melodic, beautiful uh, vocals, as you'll hear if you pay attention. Uh, um, and, and as well as how they layer the guitars, I'm not sure if you'll like it, but they have these uh, spacey approach to the guitar. So instead of just, you know, all out shred, as we heard with like Freak Kitchen and Angra, um, they approach it differently. And it's more to create this ambient space. And um, to me, it, you know, they stand out. Um, I had caught them when uh, The Flesh Prevails, their last album about a year and a half ago came out and. Uh, you know, my mind mind was blown, and then they came through town on Summer Slaughter, and I go, there's no way they're going to pull this off live, and um, it was just fantastic. Um, I mean, their drummer was a machine. You know, I remember his feet were almost a blur. You know, he was just, just like, oh, how the fuck do these guys do this shit, you know, you know, night after night? But, um, yeah, so they're death metal, but they're different. Um, that That's about how I can describe them. Cool, man. I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of interested to hear it because I've all – because – I, I, I like the idea of of you know like 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 creating space and atmosphere with the guitars. I mean that that's kind of in like in 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 my band. That's that's kind of what that's actually what I try to do a lot. You know just by right. just by you know especially when I when I when I do drop tuning, I, I, I like to do a lot of droning on the on the open C's and uh, you know and you know dissonant chords and doing different stuff like that just to just to kind of fill that space because I'm the only guitar player in the band. You know. Yep. Yep. And you do it good, and you need to continue to do that because um, that comes from a different part of your brain. Whereas, you know, you, you or I, when we really want to attack something, we throw a lot of notes at it and chunky stuff. But but it really takes you, you uh, a different part of the brain to say, hey, let's step back a little bit and do, like you say, create that space and, right on. and make it more, I don't know if musical is the right word, but um, it's just different and um I think it's important in music, and it's you know sadly it's something I overlook a little bit too much because I drink a lot of coffee, but uh, <laughs> we won't go into that. So, <laughs> all right, uh, well let's 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 check it out then. This is Fallujah, the Void Alone.
Fallujah, the void alone. I don't know why you think I would have a problem with that. That that was awesome. I'm glad you thought great. that. I'm I'm glad you you enjoyed that. I, I think they're just amazing. Just um, the uh, the, uh, the 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 dual guitar parts um, in 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 the verse, you know, is is just what you were talking about about thinking outside the box. I mean, the 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 drummer's doing his death metal thing, and and he is a machine. He's that, that guy's a nut, nuts. He is. Uh, and and you know the, and the vocalist is doing is doing his thing and the guitar players are doing they're doing something else that works. It's you know it's a strange approach, but it, yeah, it's they carry that melody as well as the uh, Tori doing the clean vocals, uh, but the guitars are just you know every time I hear it, it's like wow you know no one's really done that before um, that approach that I can recall and. Uh, it's it's just amazing stuff. It's you know as far as new bands, um, you know we talked about Vector uh, earlier, uh, offline. Um, they're an amazing band, a thrash band. But uh, this Fallujah just you know or they they blow my mind. Uh, I know I've said that a few times tonight, but right. No, I I I'm definitely gonna have to look into those to, into that band because uh, because that 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 track there just impressed the hell out of me, and I want to hear more of what they got going on. Awesome. Yeah, that's off their new album that just came out too. Uh, Pretty fantastic stuff, but a- any other stuff is in, you know, in that tier. And there's no, they're not doing it back then, kind of thing. No, because they only have like three albums out, but they've always done that approach. Um, and you think you might get tired of it, but no, they still find ways to make it just amazing. That's let's break it. That, that, that's what I call breaking shit music. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Next up on your list uh, is a band called Thorns, who I've, I've not heard of. So this is going to be a treat. Some brand new stuff. This song is called Existence. So tell us what you like about this song. Probably I like the guitar tone more than anything. It's black metal, first of all. And uh, it has original members of Mayhem, has uh, Satyricon members. It has like a lot of, you know, prominent black metal people in it. It came out in '01, but the guitar tone just sounds like a swarm of bees. It's ridiculous, and it sounds so good. And it's, I think it's a good like gateway black metal band because I have a lot of friends that just can't really get into black metal. But just this, I feel like it could, you know, help ease them into it. That just little easy. transition. <laughs> Just bite the pillow going in dry. <laughs> yeah, and this is the first track off the. C- <laughs> this is the first track off the CD, and I love when CDs start. They just start immediately. There's no long intro. It just immediate. It just starts and kicks your yeah, ass. Yeah, that's I, I I like that too. Although although you know being the, you know the, the the old school like the old school death metal bands always had like, like a lot of, a lot of them had like the noise intros in the in the first tracks. You know, they just still like, do. Lots of you know, just like lots of like you know, whammy bar noise and feedback and shit. I, I, I'm a feedback fan, so you know, I'll play with that shit all day. I don't For care. Sure. All right, cool. Uh, uh, Thorns existence. Check it out. <laughs>
Thorne's existence. That's that was awesome. That that sounded. I mean, I that guitar I, I'm, tone. I'm I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm a fan of old school black metal as well, and that was uh, that was that that's that. <laughs> it just kind of stays true to it's it. It's got man. me excited. I was like, I need to get into these guys now. It's just, I think that's their God, only like full great, length. Man. They had like some EPs, and they did that in '01, and they they kind of been on hiatus ever since, oh, which is kind man. of a bummer. That's just that's great shit, man. And that and that that, that synth or whatever it was, like, as soon as that kicked in, I was like, that was <laughs> fucking weird. <laughs> it's eerie. <laughs> oh Jesus, that was a good choice, man. Oh, all right. <laughs> Take it in. Give everybody a breather. Hey, this is a band called Tear. This song is called Land. So, what do you like about this song? Okay, it's kind of what Opeth does. They beat the shit out of a riff and play it to death. Um, this, th- this band is uh, uh, very Viking, very pagan, very fucking awesome. And the lyrics are about the courage required to sail across the sea to, to find a land that does not exist, that you don't know about. And the song riffs, the, the riffs themselves, the, the, pat, the patterns and the passages that go through the song are so long and so complex and so very intricate as you go through them. By the time you come back around to the beginning of it, you don't even recognize it. It's that complex. It's not a weird time signature or weird tempo changes or anything. It's just a big riff, perfectly composed. And they, they go through it and do it heavy guitars. Then they go through it and do a clean guitars. Then they do a clean with a solo over it. And each time through, it takes forever to get through it. So this is a, uh, what, 14 minute song. And it takes forever to get through it because the riffs are so big. So as a musician to memorize all of that and play it correctly is astounding to me that they got that these guys did this song and I'd love to see them play it live one day. If they come back to the states, I would love to see like I'd, I'd have to email them or Facebook Messenger them and say guys, you got to play Land at least once in my lifetime cuz this is an amazing song, an amazing set of riffs that are so perfect. Um and even the lyrical passages take forever to get through. They're long, they're big, they're epic as fuck because the story itself is a, is a huge concept on that album and that song. It's such a big thought to say, I'm going to sail across the Atlantic Ocean to find a land that I've never been to and hope it's there. And that's how big that song feels. And especially by the ending of the song, you feel like, oh my God, is this song done yet? But now that I've, you know, learned the song, I'm mad that it's already over. <laughs> you know, like, oh crap, the song's already done. Shit. Right. But but when I first heard the song and I was listening, I was like, fuck, this is a whole lot of song. How much more is, how much more is in this song? How many more times could they play the riff? And like, you got, you, you, can you get to an ending or something? Now I listen to it, I'm thinking, oh man, you guys could have played that 20 more times and I still would have been satisfied. It's such a big creation, front to back. Right on. All right, um, let's hear it. Tear <laughs> land. <laughs>
was Tear with Land. And I got to tell you, man, I really, <laughs> really like that song. That that song was fucking awesome. <laughs> I love co- I love corrupting people with that. There was band. there's just something about I mean uh it's I mean we we talked we talked a lot while the song was playing about uh about you know the the uh I I like my my own heritage is is, is Finnish uh so so it has a very Scandinavian sound to it you know like 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 the main riff in that song is uh when when, when you listen to, tr- to to a lot of traditional Scandinavian music they have sort of like like meandering Kind of, kind of melodies like that that that, that, that aren't chopped up in, in in short little measures like 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 American and, and most Western music is. Right. And uh, there's just that song, just like it just it just it got it got into my blood all immediately, you know. And it just I and I, it's it just just it just it, it grabbed me viscerally. It's 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 really rare when I hear music that, that when I when I hear a song that, that does that for me, uh-huh. and it's almost invariably. Uh, like Scandinavian, or you know, just what an it's 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 an amazing song. I'm just I, I'm I'm gonna listen to it again as soon as this pod as, 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 as soon as this podcast gets posted up. I'm gonna listen to it. Again. I'll have to it's give awesome. you the whole album because that that main riff of that song is in the first song like a like an overture, and it's such a weird riff because as, as you're listening to it, the the riff holds big open notes on upbeats or on the two count. That's that throws you off. Like, where's the one count? Because the drummer's not helping you. The drummer's playing something so bizarrely uh, uh, asymmetrical and, and unbalanced, and yet everything is still. If you if you're banging your head along, if you're bobbing your head along, you're still on that tempo. Well, right, but, but that's, they're you know, screwing with your head as you listen to it. Right, but that's but but you know as as I've as I've said that that's that's fairly that's that's fairly typical of a lot of like right. of like of like old traditional Scandinavian music. There's just just really complex structures like that. Uh, God, it's crazy. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, they got like seven albums out. I'll, I'm, I'll give you two of them before I leave so that you can okay. absorb them. And then you'll be like, I got to get on Amazon and make a purchase. Right. Where's my credit card? Wow, man. That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's, still, that's still not one of their popular albums. They've got albums that have, uh, oh, jeez. Uh, the Lay of Thrym, I think it was like two albums ago. The last song is a seven and a half minute song, and they only play they only play the chorus twice in it. And and if you take away the the swelling intro of the song and the swelling outro of the song, the song itself is only like three and a half minutes. But the build up into it and the the outro out of it is so perfectly perfectly magical and 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 overwhelming and just it it pulls your senses into it and it's a seven and a half minute song it's a big old gargantuan song compared to radio friendly yeah it, and it's not complex it's overwhelming it the sound of it the the size of the sound that they're creating is so overwhelming that you're trapped into a big song and it doesn't feel that big right well but 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 you were saying so so you you were saying that that, that these guys are from where, where are these guys from they're from the Faroe Islands they're halfway between the coastline of Scotland and Iceland they're right. so isolated their language the Faroese language is still very very similar to old Norse and linguists and scholars and historians have gone to their village elders to learn how to correctly translate other old Norse texts and and rune stones and things, yeah. and they they help them pronounce them correctly. So so so, so this just this just reminds me of of, of kind of a a common theme that's that's been on my mind lately, especially when it comes to <clears throat> especially when it comes to stuff like uh, like black metal and uh, like like. When, when you when you have different like subgenres or or different styles of metal, um, you can generally you know you, you get a good idea of what part of the world these people are from because right. because because it's uh, like and and it's it's really obvious with black metal being being the a, sound you know, be, gives be, you the geography yeah, be, yeah be, being a very cold and harsh having having a very cold and harsh sound, um, but but you know but these guys. You know, being being so isolated in in the middle of the ocean, and 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 there's like nothing but miles and miles and miles everywhere you look. It, that 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 really comes through in in at least in this song. If you, you read know. the lyrics, it's all about the isolation of being trapped on a boat and you don't know where the fuck you are. Right. And that whole culture feels like that. It's amazing. It's, I mean, I've I've 
read up on it and and studied a little bit about the Faroe Islands. So I'm like, man, I f- fuck your honeymoon to Barbados. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to the middle of the, the cold death of the ocean of the north and sit there and just sit there going, yeah, this is my kind of honeymoon. I like it. Yeah. Right. Right. What are you drinking? Mead. Warm. <laughs> Not cold and carbonated? Give it to me. Whatever you have, apparently. (laughs) I have to eat a goat's bladder? Fuck it. Bring it. Give me the fork. Let's do this. That's all you got? All right. Vegetables? Fuck vegetables. They don't grow here. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, Man. That le- yeah, that's that. <laughs> I, that once again was tear with land. I highly recommend it. It's a great song, and I and I, I want to hear it again. It's awesome. <laughs> Next up, uh, Revocation. Last time the, the last time you were on, you you uh, you turned me onto this band, and there I I really really dig these guys. These guys are, are pretty crazy too. Yeah. Uh, this uh, this one is called Madness Opus. Well, I like Revocation ever since their second album, which was in two thousand nine. Um, Existence is futile. And they had a song in there called Dismantle the Dictator. And it was the first time that really uh, some dude threw some insane jazz licks into some complete shred over some fucking death metal as a three-piece. And uh, I was like, this is pretty fucking special. You know, I want to check this this band out. I've been following them ever since. And every album is just fucking amazing. Dave Davidson sings and plays guitar. And he's fucking crazy. Yeah, I know. We (laughs) talked about this last time. (laughs) I got faith in you, bro, though. I know you can do it. (laughs) Yeah, maybe one of these days. (laughs) But, yeah, he plays a a Jackson 7 Warrior, which is he has his own signature line of those type of guitars. And they're pretty sweet. And uh, yeah, he he's uh, definitely on the uh, outer realms of fucking acid jazz, fucking death metal. Let's fire this one up then. This is Revocation with Madness Opus. <laughs> Yeah. 
Revocation Madness Opus. That was those guys are fucking amazing. Yeah, I they really. really are. I, I mean, I really, really dig that band. I'm glad, dude. I'm glad they turned you on to them fuckers. I mean, yeah. It's it's it's. I listen to them all the time. You know, they're so inspirational to what you do. You know, right? It's oh man, just the, the solos in that song were just. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. like like you like you know how, how how some guys when they're when they're playing a solo, even when they're technically really really good, you kind of know where they're going. Yeah, this guy, no, you don't. Yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, nope. he's all over the board, man. But he keeps it all together. You know, it's just amazing how he can invoke emotion. Just you know, on the next measure. Yeah, right now. Oh man, those guys are good. Yeah. Oof. I got, I'm still soaking it in. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really like them. Listen wow, to them man. every day. All right, all right. Let's let's move on because I got to. We got to move on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I want to listen to it again. We can do basically. five revocation songs. <laughs> right. Fuck it. <laughs> well, you've had a, a, a motley crew of all kinds of interesting folks come through here, and it's it's been a lot of fun to listen to. Absolutely. So, I, I, cool I idea, just man. I love I, I I love doing it. I mean, I, I like I'm 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 on the you know. I'm on the guest end of it, and uh, and if 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 my guests have had as much fun as I've been having today, then then it's entirely worth it. And I, I had really, a great time when I was on. So yeah, I yeah. just you know I just this is this is definitely a highlight of my week, and I love doing it. So uh, I'm going to continue as long as uh, you know as long as I can find people to be on the show. You know, we got a really thriving scene full of you know interesting musician types, and yeah, I'm I'm interested to see like what drives them. You know, that's kind of, you know, we all have kind of different influences. So right on. That's, finding out about that is your show. That's my that, that's my whole point. Yeah. Well, it's it's a cool thing. Uh, thank you for letting me host today. Thank you for hosting. Thank you for uh, I thank me. <laughs> thank me for being a guest. No, exactly. I, I, you know, I mean, yeah, you your musical tastes are, are always really interesting. So, you know, this this was a cool thing to do here got to thank the maidstone for for doing what it does john and g Wiz for holding down the fort promoting and you know ipsy for putting up with us and metal heads for meddling and america both the beer and the country america you know i i suppose it is the tradition on five songs to, to outro on a, a song of some sort Absolutely. And uh, this this week, you know, um, we are, uh, I don't know if you know Trish Kane or, or Kevin, but, you know, like we we, uh, we are part of Mare Chrysium. And the song selection for the day is, uh, what, what, which one did you choose? I think it's your favorite. It's Sunshine and Puppy Dogs. It's uh, your favorite. This is, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure that, it, that it's my favorite song that we play. It was your favorite when it's, I joined. It's, it's, yes, yes. You, you hands down and were it's, like, this and is it's, the song. I know. I, it's, and, and it's, 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 sti- it's still, I mean, it's still my favorite to play live. Although like we, re- we we rarely play it live because it's because it's very long and it's very slow yeah and it's kind of repetitive it asks a lot of the but, of the audience right absolutely to but, wait with you but but I love playing it live because because it does exactly mm-hmm. what I intended it to when I wrote it uh, it's just it's 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 just fucking it's so dissonant there's so much dissonance in it and 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 to hear it recorded is one thing but it just but but I mean you know. No, no matter no matter the production quality of 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 the recorded version it, it 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 can't do justice to hearing it live just because of how the dissonance that that, that I oh, wrote Oh, we try to make it I real mean, good and ugly. Yeah, I mean I mean just just just, <laughs> just because of how the, the the dissonance that I wrote into it 
uh, you know, when, when, when it's when it's coming through your headphones off of an MP3 file or whatever is one thing. Oh, but, the, but you know, in the room. But yeah, but when you got, but, but when you got, you know, when everything. you got several hundred watts of a PA blasting that shit in your face, and 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 and, and, and you and you get the action. I mean, when you when 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 you hear what the, what 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 those what those pitches that are wrong for each other are, are what, what they do, do together you know, when what, they get you know, together what wrong they, what they <laughs> what you know what, what what they do to the pa system when when, when these tones are fighting for dominance is just uh, to to me to me is just a fucking thing of beauty and i l- i love hearing it at, at full stage volume uh so you know it's you know it's 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 still my favorite song to play live just because it's because it's distortion just, is kind of place yeah, you like to play anyway yeah, so it's, you're it's, like it's, it's, it's kind of like torture i guess i don't know <laughs> it's weird people. <laughs> <laughs> i just i i love it so that you know and it's you know it it, it is ironically named because it because it because it, it's not a happy song it's you know it's <laughs> you know i mean but it's anyway relative. you know the Mayor Chrisium, Sunshine and Puppy Dogs. I think it's somebody's happy place. Yeah. There you go. It's it's my happy place, but for, Sing? That's, for bad reasons. I guess wrong reasons, I guess. I don't know. It's speaking <laughs> to somebody besides you, I'm sure of it. All right. Well, thanks again to all the crew here and five songs. And, uh, you know, we will catch up with you again, I guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Take it easy, folks.
going? Are we rolling? Yes. Hey, that was heavy as fuck. I love that shit.